Hi folks, the question we are going to explore in this video is do large train roundabouts in Transport Fever 2 work? Will the trains simply run into each other? Will the roundabout be efficient enough to even make it worthwhile to build one? And what about the cost? Well, that's a lot of questions. I suppose I could just go in circles asking questions. Okay, that was a pretty lame joke. There's only one way to find out the answers though, and that's to build one. So let's build a large train roundabout and see what happens. Let's get started. Smash that subscribe button below right now and click on the bell so you don't miss out on more great content. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Or just give it a thumbs up for yourself so that you'll always be able to come back and watch it again if you need to. So here we are once again in Transport Fever 2. The objective of today's video is to build a large train roundabout. And really not just to build it, but to find out, is it worthwhile building? Will it work? Will it be efficient? Will the trains even operate the way that we think they should? Anyway, there's one way to find out, and that's to build it. So that's what we're going to do in today's video. So you can see in this area here, I've already flattened out a large area for a large train roundabout. And give or take, it's about in the middle of my map. I do have a large map. I am playing with infinity money and I'm in sandbox mode so I can pretty well do whatever I want and money is no object. So I think what I'll do is I'll try this experiment using passenger trains and use high speed passenger trains. So when it comes to the actual build for train track, I will use high speed tracks with catenary and I won't bother trying to use the parallel track mod. I think that'll just confuse things. I'll just use a single track as far as the actual roundabout itself goes. Well, that's what we'll do. We'll build a large train roundabout here and then we'll see how it works. So I'll come back later once I've got the build done and I'll show you what happened. Well there's a bird's eye view of the final product. It took me a couple of hours but I finally completed the build. It's a single track roundabout utilizing high speed track with catenary. However I did run into a couple of problems. And that's why it took me so long. So I'll explain those problems and how I fixed them. The first problem I encountered was trains on the same line ending stuck nose to nose almost facing each other. I had assumed that all the trains would naturally drive the roundabout like cars would drive roundabouts in North America. That is that they would always go counterclockwise. But of course that wasn't the case. A train from one end of the line would go clockwise and a train from the other end of the line would go counterclockwise. So that wasn't going to work. So to fix that I had to set up two waypoints on the roundabout. Those waypoints are here and then one way on the other side right here. Then I had to add those waypoints to each of the two train lines. This aerial shows the train lines going through the roundabout and it's by adding these waypoints to the lines I kept the trains from running into each other and kept them all going counterclockwise. So you can see here there's two waypoints, one here and one here. So the train heading this way goes this way and the train heading this way goes that way on the Rochester to Anaheim passenger train line. But there was still one more operational problem I had to solve. The next technical problem or operational problem I had were trains actually stopping on the roundabout itself. And the solution was twofold. Number one is that this exiting leg of the, I'll call it the exiting leg of the roundabout had to be long enough to hold one train. And secondly, what I needed was a signal right here so that the train would enter here and then stop. And that way the roundabout itself would be clear and the pathway into the roundabout would also be clear. Now let's talk about the assets used in this scenario. All trains used in this scenario are the Avalia Liberty multiple unit electric passenger train. The Avalia Liberty has a lifespan of 50 years and goes for the bargain basement price of about 82 million dollars. The Avalia Liberty has a top speed of 300 kilometers per hour, although I have to say that I never saw it reach that top speed through the roundabout during this exercise. 
In conclusion, I would have to say that there are some benefits as well as some disadvantages to a large train roundabout. An intangible benefit to me is that they look kind of cool, but that's just my personal preference. Operationally, I don't really see the benefit to building a large train roundabout. Certainly, in the example we worked through today, it would have been more efficient to simply have two train lines cross at a grade separation. And in doing so, they would have had a much straighter and unimpeded path to their destination. If you're playing with a budget, I wouldn't recommend building large roundabouts like this, since you end up building additional track, that in the end is not needed. So overall, all I can say is that I'm not a big fan yet of large train roundabouts. Well, what about you? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And if there are any other Transport Fever 2 topics you would like to see a video on, note those in the comments below too, because I'm always looking for tutorial ideas. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you haven't done so already, smash that subscribe button below right now and click on the bell so you don't miss out on more great content. Click on that box in the bottom left hand corner right now to see a video you're almost guaranteed to love. This video was selected just for you by YouTube. And they know what you like, so what are you waiting for? Click on that box now, sit back, relax, and enjoy another video.